There are 26.3 million software engineers out there in the world and the field is expected to grow. I know what I'm about to say can kind of come off as crazy, but this is a great opportunity to become a software engineer. And this is because becoming a junior software engineer has never been easier. And you can do it within like six months or less. And that's the honest truth, especially with all the free and cheap resources out there that's available. Hey friends, and welcome back to the channel. If I had to relearn how to become a programmer from absolutely zero experience, to a developer in six months, I would know exactly how to do this. I would follow my five-step plan that I have created, which will take you from zero experience to becoming a developer where you can really develop and create any product that literally comes to your mind. So let's dive in. Starting with step one is to identify smart goals. Now, the first thing I would need to do is get my brain and my mind on the same page by defining smart goals. But what are smart goals? Well, smart is S-M-A-R-T, which stands for specific specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Now let's break down each area of SMART, starting with S, which is specific. My specific goal is what type of developer I wanna become. So for this video, I will proceed as I want to become a back-end engineer for web development, but you can choose anything you'd like. Next up is the measurable goal, which is the M of SMART. I can say I want to become a developer over 180 days, which is more or less six months. When you say an exact day or month amount, the goal is now measurable. I want to become a engineer in six months. Now for the A in SMART, I need to reflect and ask myself, is this goal achievable? Which is completely up to you and how much you have going on in the next six months. But I will say becoming a software engineer in six months is 100% achievable. Now you need to reflect and see, is the goal relevant with you? Which is the R of SMART. Do I actually want to become a software engineer? If yes, then I can proceed to the last letter of the SMART goal, which is time bound. Which means I will stick with this six month schedule to become a software engineer. I do want to point out that if you're looking at this thinking there is absolutely no way you can do this within the next six months due to all these time commitments you already have, that is totally okay. You can change and revisit the timeline however you want. This is your journey. And also, if you've never heard of the SMART goals and you think this might benefit you in your learning, go ahead and bop that like button so others can see and find this video. So now that I have my SMART goals defined, let's proceed to step two, which is determining which is the best programming language for my learning. Now, when choosing a programming language, there are really three tips that I use to choose the best programming language for myself. The three tips would be to evaluate the market demand, investigate my personal interest, and what learning resources are available to me. If you're unsure and you want an easy answer, start with the Python programming language. Python is growing rapidly. It is a top interview programming language due to its syntax, and you can do a lot with it. Web development, artificial intelligence, data science, these can all be done with Python. Now that you've selected a language, try and continue using it throughout your entire journey. Building up a skill level in a single language is very important. So try not to just be jumping around multiple different programming languages. If you are a gamer and you like MMORPGs, you've probably heard the reference of an altaholic, someone who creates a bunch of different characters but never reaches max level because they keep starting over every few weeks. This is the same with programming. Once you pick a language, stick with it for at least like four months to really try and hit a type of max level. Now, step Step three is identifying a structured learning path that works best for you. After you have chosen your programming language, I highly suggest looking at a path that you have high confidence that you will be able to complete. This is the time I would look for online tutorials. YouTube has a ton of free content, but I enjoy Udemy more due to the length of the content and the constructors will communicate with you a little bit more often. Now, along with the Udemy course or your YouTube course, I also really love the 100 day coding challenges, which I would do at the exact same time. This is the challenge in which you code every single day for 100 days. It really helps with muscle memory and improving your overall craft. So yes, the first 100 days is about coding every single day. And I know this sounds easy, but it really isn't. Doing anything for 100 days is hard, but that's how you create a new habit and you really create consistency in your learning effort. Now, after finishing a Python course and the 100 day Python challenge, you have 80 days left if you're trying to complete this within six months. So we are past the halfway mark. And when looking back, there'll be a ton of progress. Keep reminding yourself that coding is a marathon. And let's try and create an example so you can actually see it in your head. Would you rather have $1 million right now or a penny that doubles in value each day for 30 days? This is a true fable that teaches how the marathon mindset always wins. A million dollars a month from now will be a million dollars. A penny that doubles every day for a month will become $5,368,709.12. If you don't believe me, check my math. But I promise having a marathon mindset 
and set is significantly better than thinking this is a sprint that you can just try and win really fast. Now, after the structured path and the 100 days of coding, there are really two things I would do now, which kind of combined equals step four, and that's finding a framework for your Python or your chosen programming language, and two, finding a developer community. Finding a course that creates real life applications using a framework allows you to grow quickly because you will see how applications are built and you'll be able to keep that code to be able to reuse it in the future. A framework is essentially something that is already created so you don't have to reinvent the wheel and have a starting spot each time you create a new project. If you're new to Python and you want to learn how to create APIs and full stack applications, I have a best selling course on Udemy that you can check out. I also post on LinkedIn daily if you're trying to look for that dev community and I'll leave both links in the description below. And now to continue talking about step four, it's all about building applications. Now that you're fairly efficient at a programming language, go ahead and build practical applications you are proud of. You are proud of is the absolute best way to learn. Mark Zuckerberg built Facebook because he thought it would be a fun project and that turned out pretty well for him. So following your gut and trying to build applications you care about that are slightly unique than the rest of the world will give you a huge advantage because not only will you be able to learn while building the project, but you'll also be able to have these themes and templates that if you want to create a similar product, you will already have it right there. When I was learning the code, I built a logistics software for truckers to be able to track their loads from one spot to another. It was a fairly simple approach, more or less a deeper to do app, but specialized for truckers. This helped me when I switched jobs from junior to mid-level engineer. But do you see the thing I did there where I said it was kind of like a to do app? I reused code from a previous project and the truckers app was built on top of this to do app that I built whenever I was learning Python in the beginning. Many apps use the exact same process, but changes the context a bit that works for them. Think of threads and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. They all essentially do the exact same thing, but in different ways. One is text, one is videos, one is images. Facebook can kind of do it all, but they're all fairly similar in their approach. So what I'm trying to say after all this is reuse old projects to create new unique stuff. Now, finally for step five, and this one is what made the most difference in my life. And that was finding a mentor. A mentor taught me what Spring Boot was, Struts, Angular, React, and was able to help and provide feedback whenever I was stuck. Thinking back, I had no idea how much he helped me until I started putting all the pieces of the puzzle together later on in my life. So my challenge to you would to be find a mentor. If you don't know anyone off the top of your head, I can be your virtual mentor. If you wanna leave a comment below, a question that you're having trouble understanding, I'll be here and I will answer your question. Now just remember, you have what you need to become a developer in six months. And you just have to believe in yourself and trust the journey. Good luck in your learning path. Bye-bye.